Hello and welcome to the channel. So today's video is on filtering and it's a different video today. Today's video is not for motorcyclists, today's video is for motorist car drivers. I post on my socials little snippets of me riding which involves filtering and I get often roasted in the comments for incorrectly what is allowed and not allowed on a motorbike and you know a lot of the comments are incorrect so this video is really my effort to try and help and educate UK UK reiterate UK car drivers about what filtering is on a motorcycle and it will be from the viewpoint of a driver so obviously if from a viewpoint of a motorcyclist we're going to start with safety but not going to do that because it's from the viewpoint of a driver filtering is illegal completely utterly massively incorrect filtering in the uk is 100 percent legal it's not only legal it is encouraged for many reasons that we'll cover in this video so it is 100 percent legal i myself have ridden with the police it is mentioned in the highway code and it is encouraged on basic motorcycle tests if you filter you are uninsured now that used to be a gray area but in uh, recent times there will be links in the descriptions below to cases where the insurance has favored inside of the motorcyclist 100 percent also the new highway code update in 2022 has given motorcyclists priority over vehicles where they should be looking out for motorcyclists is filtering allowed everywhere no it isn't it's definitely legal in the uk for other countries you will need to check and obviously there are different laws relating to those countries filtering is only legal at 20 miles an hour and below this is incorrect filtering is legal up to the speed limit of the road that you are on however most motorcyclists will follow a 10 to 20 rule and what that means is whatever speed the traffic is doing we will filter at 10 to 20 miles an hour faster than that traffic so if you're on a 30 road and the traffic is stop starting at 20 miles an hour we will filter at 10 to 20 miles an hour faster than the slowest moving vehicle now obviously if the cars are doing 20 and the speed limits 30 we can't be doing 40 but if you're on a motorway and the traffic is doing 40 miles an hour we could technically be filtering past at 70 but most motorcyclists would not want to be doing that due to the faster you go the more you increase your risk so what actually is filtering well this is a confusion because there is filtering when you are in a car so filtering on a car is if you have two lanes so you have a slow lane and a fast lane you have the car in the fast lane you're in the slow lane if you are in the fast lane you move into the slow lane and you go past that car providing you do not pull back in within a certain distance that is classed as filtering when you're in the car but filtering on a motorcycle is very different and this is where the confusion actually comes around so what is filtering on a motorcycle well it's actually doing whatever you like in slow to stationary traffic you can overtake a car you can undertake a car you can overtake go in front of the car and then undertake the car in front you can do whatever you like weaving in and out of traffic now here is the big proviso providing it is safe to do so it's irrelevant of speed however speed will be a factor of your safety it is it is deemed safe to do so in the motorcyclist's opinion and if the motorcyclist gets it wrong then it will be very bad for them with regards to injury and insurance is filtering lane splitting no you may get confused with that thinking yes it's the same as lane splitting but from what i see and correct me if i'm wrong here because i'm not an american but i see americans on highway freeway going in between cars so you see these two lorries here like me going right in between them at that point going in between them at above 50 miles an hour that is just so dangerous 
to reiterate driving in between cars so say there were cars either side of me here and I drive down the middle of them if I do that at 20 30 miles an hour it is perfectly safe it is perfectly legal if I do that at about 50 miles an hour and above then that is really asking for it and most motorcyclists would deem that as dangerous is there a magical middle lane for motorcyclists yes there is every lane is for motorcyclists here i can move into oncoming traffic if it is safe to do so and there is an advantage in doing so what i just done there there is no advantage but you see how quickly i can easily move in my visibility all of that is safe for a motorcyclist because you're on a motorcycle surely you can't be allowed to overtake undertake willy-nilly well yes you can as i just said and the reason is is because you're not in a car you're not in a lorry you're not in a hgv you're not in a truck you're not in a tank you're not in an airplane you are on a motorcycle there is a massive difference between what a motorcycle can do and what a car can do and that is why it is safe for bikes to weave in and out of traffic the same way it is safe for push bikes like this one here checking on the doggy to do the same what makes you feel so entitled <laughs> well the fact that we are entitled motorcyclists are entitled to filter in slow and stationary traffic now do not confuse that with a motorcyclist thinks it's their divine right to be able to filter and cars must get out of their way we'll get to that later motorcyclists do not but are we entitled to filter yes we are legally entitled to filter so we will why can't you wait like everybody else well we don't have to and it is safer for us to filter look at it this way if you paid for speedy boarding on an aeroplane would you go in the speedy boarding fast queue or would you queue up with everybody else you have speedy boarding with a motorcycle you bought it when you bought the motorcycle so why would you queue and then safety we're going to get to later in the video but it's so dangerous well i'm on a 160 horsepower super hyper naked whatever they call them these days motorcycling is dangerous filtering at 20 30 miles an hour to us is completely sedate not filtering however is dangerous which we're going to cover later we have to remember on a bike you have so much spatial awareness you know the width of your bike you can literally reach out and touch those vehicles so you know the distance going through you are also on a heightened sense of alertness when you're filtering looking so far ahead watching the tires when they move out there's so many tips and tricks i'm not going to go into in this video because it's for cars not motorcyclists be assured that we are on heightened sense of alertness when we are filtering we're looking out for these cars pulling in front of us and we can judge what is safe most of the time going past don't get me wrong bikers are not infallible there will be errors but when you're looking from a car how can a bike do that it's a very different perspective when you're sat on the tank and the real reason we do it then safety so safety if a bike gets rear-ended which happens much much more than you think it does the injuries caused from being rear-ended even at five miles an hour to a motorcyclist is huge they could be life-changing injuries see here I pull up at these lights I'm at the front now but I'm always checking my mirrors no one's coming up on me really quickly about to smack me in the back if I just pull over here when I am sat stationary I am not in control of my destiny it is so easy for cars to rear, rear end a bike where they're just not aware of the spatial distance to the bike they are looking through the bike at the lights of the car in front not noticing the single light of the bike behind and just a little smack into your bike especially if you're not aware if you're not on the brake so I'm sat here now if I disengage my heel hold the bike 
bike will roll in between my legs. So if a car hits me from behind, I am going to jerk back, my head going straight up, the bike going forward, landing on me, breaking a leg, snapping my neck, doing some serious injury. And all of that I have very little control over when I am stationary in traffic. But if I can move around the danger, which is the cars, go all the way to the front and get out of their way as soon as possible, that is going to be far more safer for the biker than sat stationary, relying on their mirrors. And even now I'm in neutral, so if I saw a car coming up to me really quickly, I'm going to have to quickly get it in gear and move out the way. There's no time to do that. So, safety on fatigue. Now look here. Here I am at the lights. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I am in gear, I am holding the bike, my clutch, my arms getting tired on this clutch, I'm watching around me being aware all the time, I am, my feet are down, the bike is heavy in between my legs, if, I, if it moves over a little bit too far, I could be in serious trouble. Stationary on a bike, holding your gear in, waiting, 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 lights that aren't picking you up, it is a fatigue on your body. So the other thing you would do, is you would then relieve that fatigue by find, trying to find neutral, which is not always easy on a bike. Watch here, first, second, first, second, uh, neutral. So we're in neutral, we're holding it here, we're waiting, we're being patient. But if these lights change now, I am going to have to go here we go, car behind, but I've had to go into first. Look how much slower that is. Do you want a car taking up those extra precious seconds, especially if the light is a short one? Bikes are very maneuverable at high speeds to an extent, but at slow speeds, they're a real pain in the butt. This bike is a light bike at 170 kilos. The majority of motorbikes are around 200 kilos. Bikes have different weight tipping points. They're heavy to keep upright. So a bike will position itself here so it can see all the way down the traffic. But cars can sometimes think they can fit in this gap here. And when they get it wrong, they're driving over your foot. They're causing you to panic and slam on your brakes. Here, my foot is now out and it is down, but I'm having to feather the clutch. There's a lot of work that is being involved here to ride this bike at this slow speed. I'm having to balance the bike. When you start getting up to speeds of above 10 miles an hour, then things become easy. I can lighten up, I can grip the tank with my knees so I can alleviate the pain on my wrists if you're hunched over. Bikes are just not designed to be ridden under 10 miles an hour. The fatigue caused to the rider from riding at slow speeds will affect that rider's decision, which ultimately affects their safety, their mood. So here is me slow speed riding now, trying to do below 10 miles an hour. My clutch is in, my clutch is out. Look at this road surface in front of me. I'm having to actively steer to try and keep the bike upright. Now if the car in front just slams on its brake. I'm having to slam on my brakes, both my feet are out. It, it's just a horrible, horrible way to ride. Slow speed riding, and a lot of motorcyclists do not learn how to ride below 10 miles an hour, how to do slow speed riding, how to maneuver their bikes in slow speed. And of course, the bigger your bike is, the harder it is. Safety in weather conditions. Now, you may think that the wind in your hair and all the crap you think with riding a motorbike. No, motorbikes are actually quite uncomfortable to ride uh, with regards to kit. In summer, when you're stuck at a set of traffic lights, your engine is throwing out heat on your legs. The gear will keep you cool when you're moving and you've got an airflow. But when you're sat in traffic around you, engines pumping out smoke, your bike is throwing out heat you're in kit that isn't breathing until you're moving you are miserable you are hot you are bothered you are miserable and that is going to impact your mental state and your ability to ride your bike and ultimately your safety then the reverse in winter in winter your kit is designed to keep you warm but sometimes it keeps you a little bit too warm you need to move to get that airflow get the events working or it's not keeping you warm enough and your fingers are freezing and 
your visor's steaming up. You need to pop your visor open, but you can't because you need your hands for your clutch. Even today, my bike is saying 10 degrees. My visor is steaming up. I'm wearing a warm balaclava under my helmet, but I can see my breath. And if it's raining, it's harder to ride your bike in the rain. You have to be so much more aware than if you're in the dry. So filtering just means you can get your journey done quicker. Do you need to move out the way for bikes? No. When it is safe to do so, a bike will filter past you. This scenario here, it wasn't safe to do so. So I didn't move. The car in front of the car in front stalled. The car in front was not happy about it. I immediately checked my mirror to make sure that the car behind is not moving and gonna rear end me, have to slam on their brakes. This is the danger that motorcyclists have in traffic. We have nothing to protect us apart from the clothing we are wearing. Therefore, if we can get out of the way of drivers who are causing us issues, we will. When we are riding slow, we have to use all of our extremities. We have to use both arms, both legs. So we can't always put a hand out to say thank you because the left hand is on the clutch, the right hand is on the accelerator, the right foot is on the rear brake, and the left foot we might need to stable ourselves to put our foot down, and also you might be on the right side of us and so can't see it anyway. When you're riding in winter like here, my even though I've got a pin lock, my visor is steaming up. I'm getting a bit hot under my visor, so I have to pop it open. It's hard to get an arm free to be able to do that when you are stuck in traffic having to hold your clutch in. If it is safe to filter, we will filter. You do not have to move out the way for us. Here I deem it safe, here I've got room, here I'm looking up the road, I will filter. Back there in the video, you may have noticed I didn't filter because I didn't have the room. Just go about your business. Don't worry about the bike. When we have room to get past, we will get past. If you make room for us, thank you so much. And as I pointed out, if we can, we will thank you. But sometimes we can't move an arm or a leg to stick it out to say thank you. We might give a nod like this and you might not catch it. But believe me, we really do appreciate it when you move just a couple of mil to the side just to acknowledge you've seen us and you moved out the way and of course the last point to cover is all bikers are arseholes well with attitudes like that it's no wonder then that there's a them and us attitude with bikers and smashing mirrors and all of that crap and one thing you have to bear in mind if you want to start a fight with a bike, or a biker, look at my gloves. Okay, that's probably a good point to end the video on. Um, thanks as always for watching. A like and a subscribe would be greatly appreciated. If you do have any questions about filtering, please put them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks again.